Hello and a very warm welcome to the first edition of Science Monitor in the year 2020. Through this program, we bring you a weekly report of the important activities happening in and around the country pertaining to science, technology and innovation. I'm Ashwarya with you. From the inauguration of Indian Science Congress in Bengaluru to the science tour of Indian National Centre for Ocean Information Services, we have lots in store for you. So let us begin with the headlines. 107th Indian Science Congress inaugurated in Bengaluru aims to focus on science and technology in rural development. Plans to launch Chandrayaan-3 in 2021 reveals ISRO chairman at a press conference on the first day of the year. India State of Forest Report 2019 released Positive assessment about the growth of forest area in the last two years. And National Children's Science Congress 2019 organized in Thiruvananthapuram. Children present their research projects on clean, green and healthy nation. 107th Indian Science Congress was inaugurated by the Prime Minister on 3rd of January in the city of Bengaluru, which is hosting this prestigious event for the ninth time. The convention aims to accelerate the role of science and technology in the rural development and is being attended by over 15,000 delegates, including scientists from abroad. Let us see the report to know more. The 107th Indian Science Congress began on 3rd January at the University of Agricultural Sciences in Bengaluru. The annual science conference, which runs from 3rd to 7th January, was inaugurated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi in the presence of Union Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Harshwardhan, and the other dignitaries, including the Chief Minister of Karnataka. On the occasion, Prime Minister also launched the iSTEM portal developed by Indian Institute of Science Bengaluru to help researchers to locate specific type of facility they need for their research and development work in India. As the theme of this year's Science Congress is Science and Technology Rural Development, so the Prime Minister stressed on the role of SNT in agricultural sector. टेक्नोलॉजी की उपयोगिता को हमें और व्यापक बनाना है आने वाला दशक भारत में साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी आधारित गवर्नेंस के लिए एक डिसाइसिव समय होने वाला है विशेष तौर पर कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव एग्रीकल्चर और फार्म टू कंज्यूमर के बीच के सप्लाई चेन नेटवर्क को लेकर अभूतपूर्व संभावनाएं Technology 15,000 people from around the world, including scientists, intellectuals, accommodations, policy makers, researchers, students, and delegates from different institutions, are attending the event. The five day conference will see lectures and discussions on more than 14 science areas, along with Women's Science Congress, Children's Science Congress, and Science Communicators Meet. A session on Farmer Science Congress is also being organized for the first time in this convention. All of us now ensure that we reach out to the widest spectrum of all the stakeholders in science, whether it is a young boy, whether it is a farmer, whether it is a small company, or anyone who can contribute through science for the betterment of this country and of course the whole world. The Indian Science Congress Association owes its origin to the foresight of two British scientists, Professor J. L. Simonson and Professor P. S. McMohan, who thought of an annual meeting to stimulate the scientific research in India. Now this institution is functioning like an autonomous organization under Department of Science and Technology, Government of India and organizes Science Congress at different places of the country every year.
While addressing a press conference on the first day of the year, ISRO chief K7 revealed the Indian Space Research Organization's plan to launch the third moon mission as early as 2021. According to the ISRO chairman, Chandrayaan-3 will need to carry only a lander and a rover as the orbiter of the Chandrayaan-2 can take care of the rest for nearly seven years. Here is a report. A press meet was organized at the ISRO's headquarters in Bangalore on the New Year's Eve. The ISRO chairman Dr. K. Sivan outlined the organization's achievements during the last one year and also briefed about the ISRO's plans for the current year, including the Chandrayaan-3. During 2019, six launch vehicles and seven satellite missions were realized by ISRO, including the milestone achievements of Chandrayaan-2 and the 50th launch of Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, PSLV. Another major interesting aspect what we did last, last year was we have made PS4 as an experimental platform after it's injected its a satellite. That's the one. And uh, Vikram processor, an yeah, indigenous Vikram processor, realized in SCL Chandigarh. In the year 2019, the second vehicle assembly building was dedicated to the nation to increase the launch frequency from the Satish Dhawan Space Center, Sri Harikota. Apart from this, a launch viewing gallery was also open for the general public. Dr. Sivan also referred to Uvika, a special program introduced for school children aimed at imparting basic knowledge of space science. Among the plans for the year 2020, the chairman also informed that the government has given the green signal for the third moon mission. Chandrayaan 3 configuration will be almost similar to Chandrayaan 2. Only thing is, in that, that Chandrayaan 2, we had orbiter, lander, rover configuration. Here, this orbiter already functioned, will be used. So, Chandrayaan 2 will be having mostly a lander and rover and with a propulsion module. So, this, this we, are, uh, the, the, we have initiated this project and work is going on very smoothly on Chandrayaan 3. Dr. Sivan also mentioned that India's first crewed space mission, Gaganyaan, is in progress and four astronauts have been selected to undergo training for the mission. In the year 2019, ISRO accomplished many a mission and worked continuously to increase its capacity for future space programs and to enhance its outreach activity. It is expected that ISRO will continue to make us proud of India's space achievements and will successfully accomplish all its planned missions and scale new heights in the future. The Forest Survey of India, working under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, publishes an extensive biennial report on the state of forests in the country. Recently, the 16th report by FSI was released, which is largely based on the satellite data, vector boundaries of districts and data processing of field measurements. Let us find out what are the main outcomes of this report. Although India features among the top 10 countries in the world with the most forest area, yet it also faces a lot of challenges that pose a threat to the existence of forests. Therefore, the status of the forests is reviewed continuously and Forest Survey of India publishes a report every two years. Recently, the Union Minister of Environment, Forests and Climate Change, Prakash Javadekar, released India's State of Forest Report 2019. And according to the report, there has been an increase in every kind of forest area. Forest Survey of India ka jo naya forest survey aya hai do saal ka isme yahi sabit hua ki duniya ke keval chand desh hai jaha jungle bada hai usme Bharat bahut agresor hai aur Bharat ka jungle kshetra pichle char saal me tera hazar square kilometer se bada hai ye sab se badi uplab di hai. According to the report, at present, the total forest area and tree cover area in the country is 80.73 million hectares, which is about 25% of the total geographical area. As per the report, 
total forest area has increased by 3,976 square kilometers and tree cover by 1,212 square kilometers as compared to 2017. The report states that maximum forest cover has increased in the states of Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Kerala, Jammu Kashmir and Himachal Pradesh, while Maharashtra has the highest tree cover area. In addition to this, the number of trees has also increased in Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh. In the forest, the forest has increased in the forest, which ग्रीन कवर बढ़ा है ग्रीन कवर बढ़ने से वातावरण को के बेहतर परिणाम मिलते हैं क्लाइमेट चेंज को कम करने में मदद मिलती है और साथ ही साथ कार्बन सिंक क्रिएट होता है जो देश के लिए बहुत महत्वपूर्ण बात है और यह लगातार वृद्धि हो रही है यह और भी हर्ष की बात है as compared to the previous assessment of 2017 an increase of 54 square kilometers has been observed in the mangrove cover the report also includes data on wetlands and bamboo-bearing lands in the country, in addition to the information on the fire-prone forest areas of the country. Now it is time for a short break. Stay tuned to watch more interesting reports. Welcome back. After the break, you're watching Science Monitor. The science and technology organizations of our country are playing an important role in our day-to-day -day life by providing us with various kinds of information and updates. Today, we'll take you to one such organization in Hyderabad, which is benefiting the society, the industry and the researchers by providing them with the crucial information about the state of the oceans. Here is our special report. Today we'll visit the Indian National Centre for Ocean Information Services, Hyderabad. The centre, popularly known as INCOIS, is an autonomous organisation under the Ministry of Earth Sciences. Established in 1999 as a unit of the Earth System Sciences Organisation, the centre works to provide ocean information and advisory services to society, industry, government agencies and the scientific community through ocean observations and constant improvements through systematic and focused research. We are having uh, as of today 48 products uh, which are so useful for um, those who venture into sea and those products are being exclusively used by uh, many users. Uh, people like fisher folks, then uh, Indian uh, Navy, Coast Guard, uh, maritime boats, port and harbors, and also products are being exclusively used by offshore industries. Using modern equipment and satellite data, the INCOIS issues potential fishing zones advisories daily in 10 languages to facilitate fishermen, besides providing ocean state forecasts information. The Ocean State Forecast Center constantly monitors the changes in the ocean to warn timely about high tide and cyclones. These bulletins are issued uh, well in advance uh, during the cyclones, uh, six days or seven days in advance and this is being supplied to various organizations like NGOs and also direct users and also it is being supplied to National Disaster Management Authority and also state uh, authorities and in turn they will take actions based on our bulletins. In 2012, a Tsunami Early Warning Center was also established at INCOIS, which has become the major tsunami information center of the Indian Ocean region within a decade of establishment. Here, seismic data is collected round the clock from national and international observatories and warning is issued immediately in case of tsunami. In addition to this, INCOIS researchers carry out important projects related to ocean ecosystems and biodiversity research. It archives all observational, satellite and other oceanic data, which is a treasure trove to understand and predict the changes in the ocean. No doubt, the center is an invaluable asset, not only for India, but also for the countries situated on the rim of the Indian Ocean. 
And now let's have a quick look at some other developments happening in the field of science and technology through our segment Science Express. The Council of Scientific and Industrial Research is launching an innovation center for the next generation energy storage solution. On 29th December 2019, the Union Minister of Science and Technology, Earth Sciences, Health and Family Welfare laid the foundation stone of this center. The 100 Pro initiative is part of the center's clean energy project through which the government plans to increase the share of clean energy to around 40% by 2022. On this occasion, the Union Minister also inaugurated a fuel cell assembly and testing facility at CSIR complex. NASA unveiled the Mars Rover 2020. The rover is scheduled to leave the Earth in July this year and is expected to land on Mars' surface after seven months, thereby becoming NASA's fifth rover to land on Mars. Through this rover, scientists are seeking to find evidence of life on Mars. This ambitious mission of NASA will also pave way for its future manned missions. According to the scientists, this mission will help in understanding the geological and chemical context on the surface of Mars. The rover is equipped with 23 cameras, lasers and two hearing aids to listen to the Martian winds. Recently, Eat Right Fair was organized at Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium in Delhi. The fair was organized by the Food Safety and Standards Authority of India or FSSAI and the purpose of this event was to promote good eating habits and to spread awareness about safe and nutritious food. The fair included exhibits on healthy diets and innovations by food industry besides a variety of street foods from all corners of the country. According to the organizers, international standards were followed in terms of cleanliness and dietary standards. American astronaut Christina Koch has set a new record for the longest single space flight by a woman by surpassing the record of 288 days set by former NASA astronaut Peggy Whitson. As Christina arrived at International Space Station on 14th March 2019, and is scheduled to return in February 2020, so she is set to spend more than 300 days in space. Koch was also a part of the first all-female spacewalk that happened in October 2019. Daily exercise is good not only for preventing heart diseases, but also to prevent ailments like cancer. According to an extensive international research, exercise is important for cancer prevention and can lower the risk of developing breast, kidney, bladder and stomach cancers. The research has been published in an international journal and has reconfirmed the conclusions of previous studies done in this context. Time for another short break but don't go anywhere as we'll be right back. Welcome back once again, you're watching Science Monitor. As per the tradition, the National Children's Science Congress was organized from 27th to 31st of December to provide a platform to the children to present their micro-research on the chosen themes. This year, the children presented their research projects based on the theme of science and technology and innovation for a clean, green and healthy nation. Let us see the report to know more about this annual science event. The 27th National Children's Science Congress was organized in Thiruvananthapuram, Kerala and the state-level winner teams were excited to be a part of this prestigious event organized every year by the National Council for Science and Technology Communication NCSTC under the Department of Science and Technology DST Government of India The 27th Congress was hosted by Kerala State Council for Science, Technology and Environment KSC STE, Government of Kerala, and the focal theme of the event was Science, Technology and Innovation for a Clean, Green and Healthy Nation. 
this is an occasion where the students can learn from all the other students in other states and this is actually a reflection of national integration and national integrity where the students can learn from the other students from other states as well their culture the way of presentation as well as the means in which they can improve for their scientific presentations NCSC 2019 was attended by about 700 children representing different states and union territories of the country. Three main events at the National Children's Science Congress were technical sessions for research presentation, science exhibition and activity corner. The participants presented their projects related to chosen sub theme which ranged from prevention of diseases to making of organic manure from flowers offered in temples. I feel very good in this uh, National Children's Science Congress as this is my first experience um, and I accept that I will more enjoy in this National Children's Science Congress. Thank you. Uh, there will be technical sessions, you know, so I want to uh, means interact with the uh, scientists and all or the expertise who will be coming here and uh, I like to know many things. National Children's Science Congress provides a platform to school children as well as to children out of school in the age group of 10 to 17 years to exhibit their innovativeness and ability to solve a local problem using the method of science. It encourages the children to think critically and rationally to draw logical conclusions and also provides them an opportunity to learn from the experts and the other participants representing different parts of the country. And now it is time to remember the past events that have shaped our present world of science and technology. So let's have a look at the history of science. On 7th January 1610, Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei discovered three moons of Jupiter, Io, Europa and Callisto, orbiting the planet. A few weeks later, he also discovered the fourth moon The four moons were the first objects that were found to regularly orbit some other body in the space other than the Earth. This was an important evidence to prove that Earth was not the center of the universe. Galileo made this discovery using one of history's first telescopes which he had constructed in 1609. On 9th January 1922, Indian American biochemist Dr. Hargobind Khurana was born in Raipur, Punjab. After a PhD from the University of Liverpool in 1948, Khurana began his research on nucleic acids during a fellowship at the University of Cambridge. He contributed mainly in deciphering the genetic code using synthetic genes. In 1968, Dr. Khurana received the Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine along with Robert W. Holly and Marshall W. Nirenberg for interpreting the genetic code and its function in protein synthesis. He is also renowned for constructing the first synthetic gene and received a multitude of awards and honors including the Padma Vibhushan by Government of India and the National Medal of Science by the US. On 10th January 1968, the American moon probe Surveyor 7 landed on the moon. Surveyor 7 was the fifth and final spacecraft of the Surveyor series to achieve a soft landing on the moon. The spacecraft landed 29 kilometers north of the Tycho crater and was the only spacecraft of the series to land in the lunar highland region. Surveyor 7 also served as a target for earth-based lasers to accurately measure the distance between earth and the moon. That's all in today's edition of Science Monitor. Do tell us how do you like our program? You can send your feedback and suggestions through email. Our email ID is news@vigyanprasar.gov.in. You can also write into us at Vigyan Prasar, 5th floor, Prithvi Bhavan, Lodhi Road, New Delhi. One one zero 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 three. We'll meet you again next week with new informative stories on science and technology. Till then, stay tuned and think scientifically. Bye bye.